Today we're going to be looking at another one of Veritasium's videos. Specifically, why are there 96 million black balls in this reservoir? Well, hopefully it's not one for a nuclear plant. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this one out. Look at them go. These are shade balls. They're being dumped into this water reservoir in Los Angeles. Okay. And contrary to what you may have heard, their main purpose is not to reduce evaporation. So, well, they would because they're reducing the amount of sunlight that hits the water. They could also preserve the water chemistry because sunlight can interact with chlorine that is typically used to treat water just like it is in your pool. What are they really for? To find out, I'm visiting the largest collection of these balls anywhere on Earth what? at LA Reservoir. It's very relaxing. 96 million shade balls. That's correct. <laughs> 96 million. So at the nuclear plant, at the nuclear plant that I work at, we don't have cooling towers. All of the cooling is done by a 70,000 acre reservoir. As shown in this diagram, the cooling towers just cool the main condenser. This is all in the non-nuclear part of the plant. It just exists in the same steam turbine cycle that has existed for well over 200 years. Now, depending on the nuclear plant's design, or really any power plant's design, you can use cooling towers or a sufficiently large reservoir. Some plants actually have both, but again, its whole purpose is just to cool the condenser. It's, it's very rare for you to see 96 million of anything. <laughs> this is your life vest, which you are required to wear. All right. Throw Safety first. Yes, anytime you're near bodies of water in a nuclear power plant, rip. Um, including up above the spent fuel pool. If you're in the, if you're in a part that's above the water, you're required to wear the life vest because that is the biggest hazard associated with the spent fuel pool. Not radiation dose, but drowning. After all, there's no lifeguard on duty. A leg over and climb on in any way you can. A boat in a sea of balls. Looking at this, I had so many questions. Like, why are they black? Are they safe to have in drinking water? How much do they cost? Do they- Yeah, really, how sterilized are these things? But here, we're at the reservoir that we're quite a few steps in the water cycle away from drinking, so. <laughs> actually reduce evaporation. And what is their real purpose? One other reason why you would have something to get rid of sunlight would be to prevent the growth of algae. Now, I know this is water that's also chemically treated, and at least at a nuclear plant's cooling reservoir, I've seen algae blooms. They look kind of like this. And it's funny because a lot of people associate green glowing thing with nuclear things, and seeing this green stuff by the circulating water intake structure that sends water to cool the condenser can be kind of funny. And the main hazards associated with this to the plant are long-term biofouling of heat exchangers. And again, this is all in the non-nuclear part of the plant. No immediate hazard, but they are chemically treated, usually by something like copper sulfate, really anything with copper in it. I also wouldn't recommend swimming in an algae bloom, depending on the species of algae that can produce toxins. Is it hard to drive in shade balls? It is very hard. Why is that? The... These are actually partially filled with water. And the, re the reason they're filled with water is oh, that, that at LA Reservoir, we have some really high winds. And so, uh, you know, if we didn't put water- That makes perfect sense. Yeah, you don't want them to go flying everywhere. Because it can be windy across reservoirs, I've seen that. At the nuclear plant, we have technicians that routinely do rounds around the reservoir and drive around said 70,000 acre structure, and the wind can get pretty intense. You need to drive carefully so the wind doesn't blow your car in the reservoir. Water in these things, there'd be balls down, so bouncing on the five freeways people drive down. They'd be all over the place. Wow. So, uh, so these keep the balls in the reservoir, and if they do start to roll, they kind of wobble because the water makes them uneven. But that makes them significantly more difficult to push out of the way, especially when they form close-packed crystal-like structures. This is cool. I mean, it, it's it's almost like perfect black spheres that it looks like outside of context. So we've shrunk down and we've looked at some crystal lattice structure of some sort. 
<laughs> I know that's not what it actually looks like, but it kind of feels that way. Behind the boat, the balls quickly come together in our wake, and some close oh, yeah. to the motor are pulled along with the boat. Mm -hmm. A wake of balls. Wow. Did you, what did you think the first time they suggested doing this or, or when, it, when it first came in? Yeah, it was a little out there. <laughs> did you think they were nuts? No, not nuts. <laughs> well, it just, it like, it looks absurd. I like this guy. It's like we're in the world's biggest ball pit. Right, yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, you what, you can't tell by standing here that we're actually floating like water. over, I think it's probably 40, 40 feet right here, 40, 50 feet deep yeah. below us. And we, you can't even see any water. You'd think it was a joke, right? Like you jump on in, and then you realize, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> if, if you didn't know, you'd be like, no, you're not. That's <laughs> you're, you're a green screen or something, right? Yeah, it's fake. Yeah, I think if when I was a little kid, I probably would have just ran straight in there <laughs> when like wanting to play in the really big ball pit. I'm I'm sure. So like, when I switch on my tap at home... I kind of want to do it now. Is the water coming from here? Yes. Sometimes. Yes, or always. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yes. most of the time, the water's coming from here. Yes. Absolutely nuts. So why is LA oh, Reservoir covered so in shade balls? Well, the problem all started with bromide. Bromide is a naturally occurring uh, substance. It's associated with salt water. And so normally uh, places like the California aqueduct mm, okay. uh, that comes down from the delta, you get some salt water intrusion. So you have some bromide in the water. Bromide's harmless and it's almost impossible to remove. Um, but when you, when you disinfect the water with ozone, mm -hmm. that bromide becomes bromate. And bromate is oh, bro carcinogenic. Oh, and bromate, so yeah. around the year 2000, they wrote regulations uh, regulating bromate. And the regulations basically said, if you have a treatment plant that uses ozone, then you have to uh, watch your bromate formation and be careful not to form too much. So the only place we ever measured bromate was at our filter plant. And the results were always within the 10 micrograms per liter limit set by regulators. So they were confused when they got a call from one of their customers, a beverage company in LA. They said, we have some really high levels of bromate showing up. Because this is downstream. Okay. This is kind of analogous to the placement of radiation detectors within a nuclear power plant. So I mentioned this circulating water system and the secondary loop are all part of the non-nuclear portion of the plant. Well, we still put radiation detectors there. And one accident scenario that we're heavily trained on is the event of a steam generator tube leak. So the boundary between the nuclear and the non-nuclear part of the plant is the main steam line. And the tube, the part in this diagram that's red, is radioactive. I mean, it's the reactor coolant system. It's supposed to be radioactive. But if that tube were to sprung a leak and leak into the steam generator, you could have radioisotopes that show up in the secondary non-nuclear part of the plant and it becomes contaminated. Now there are various ways to, if said event does occur, to separate the contaminations. What you would do is, well, you would shut down the reactor. You would use demineralizers and filters to physically and chemically separate the radioisotopes to contain all the contaminants. That's why we put radiation detectors in there. So I can totally see the challenges of just measuring a contaminant or a carcinogenic substance at just one spot, well, that doesn't tell you the whole story. Are you aware of this? And we said, well, we don't show anything. But between the filtration plant and the customer was the reservoir. Yes. So they did some tests. Almost immediately upon coming into this open reservoir, the, the bromate levels jumped. It you need to put a detector there. <laughs> turned out that bromide with chlorine, which was supposed to be safe in bright sunlight, form bromate even more than ozone did. Okay, so I was on the right track. I just didn't mention bromate earlier. Okay. And so we made this un unfortunate scientific discovery that actually was not part of any regulatory scheme. And so here we are at the reservoir. We have water source that's got bromide in it, harmless. We have chlorine. We have to have to disinfect the water. Yes. And we have sunlight because it's open. The only choice we have is to remove sunlight. So we looked at all sorts of things. We looked at floating across the water yeah. and normally you put a floating cover on the water but that's a multi-year project 
And so we said, well, can we manufacture these kind of trampolines with poly, like PVC pipe? And we said, well, they're just going to become bird perches. It'll have a big water quality problem. And so yeah. then we, we... Bird droppings is a big hazard. You see those on pretty much every open structure in the turbine building for the nuclear plant or really anything open. It's because birds like to get on top of elevated structures. We knew we had uh, high density polyethylene pipe, which is used in the water industry, and, and it, we know that it floats. We at one point thought about, can we just float a pile of pipe across the surface? Well, that's hard to do and very expensive because it's a lot of material. And so maybe we could take some pipe and run it through a chipper and we can make a de debris field across the surface, like the back corner of a, of a lake somewhere. Huh. But then you have all this mushy, warm water with plastic floating on the top. Ah. That doesn't sound appetizing a drink at all. It sounds like a Petri dish. And so lo and behold, Dr. Brian White did some research and he, and he found the shade ball. Except they weren't called shade balls at the time. This product existed and they were called bird balls. And they used it on, on ponds that had mine tailings where they didn't want waterfowl to go in and get poisoned. And also around airports where there were ponds and they wanted to keep the waterfowl off so that they didn't take off and get into jet engines. You know, they'd actually done wind tunnel testing and they had, you know, blew, you know, 50, 60 mile hour winds that across to see man. how they'd behave. But they were really made to deter birds and wildlife from, from sitting on the water. Did there used to be birds landing here more? Do like Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Once we deployed these balls, all the birds were gone. They used to just hang out, right, loiter at the curbs. Yeah, they'd be yeah. all over the, the top of the dam. Bird droppings. They'd everywhere. be down at the, the outlet tower. They'd be everywhere, but mm -hmm. we don't get them anymore like we used to. Hmm. But before being added to the reservoir, the shade balls had to be tested. Would they actually reduce the formation of bromate? And we bought three kiddie pools, three little inflatable kiddie pools. And we filled them all with the reservoir water. One was in the That's sunlight, awesome. one we put a tarp on, one we put... I mean, I love it, just testing it at scale. Though you gotta put them in a similar environment where they're exposed to a similar amount of sunlight, but shouldn't be too hard for LA. Put shade balls on. And amazingly, the shade balls knocked out the problem immediately. So the reason shade balls are black is to block all light from reaching the water and triggering the bromate black reaction. Light, yes. The black pigment is also safe for contact with drinking water, and it's stable even exposed to the elements for years. They're That's true, yeah. Black's a more stable color. I've seen like red flags, danger barriers, markings um, on certain parts of outside exposed structures, and the red eventually fades to like a pink and eventually to a white, so... It's a good color. Black for a reason. So, you know, they're made out of uh, high density polyethylene. It's the same material that uh, like a gallon milk jug is made out of. It's a food grade plastic. And, and they would be clear like a milk carton, except that they wouldn't last in the sun. And so they have a, a material called carbon black in them. And that's what makes the, uh, the plastic last for at least 10 years out of the sun. That's important. We did test to see if there's any other colors we could use. So we actually had the company make uh, three different shades of blue, but the dyes oh, wow, were so unstable purple. they said, we can't guarantee it's gonna last more than a year. And so it's that carbon black, that's the magic powder in this, that really makes this product last in the sunlight. One of the concerns that, that people raised to me when we first put these on uh, was that, are they gonna get hot and then leach material out? And they don't, they're, they're totally inert. I mean, theoretically, you could cut off a piece of this ball and you could chew it, and no harm comes to you. This is- th That was a valid question and I'm glad they tested that. This is totally food grade, nothing wrong with it whatsoever. What's it like food driving grade? through these things? It's difficult. As you can see, we've been sitting here for, oh, I don't know how long, quite a while, and there's a breeze and we haven't moved. I mean, anybody that knows that's been on a boat in a lake, if there's a slight breeze and you're on a boat, you're drifting, right? Not here. This thing, they're just yeah. stable. That you would. It's interesting you think when you swim try now? to pilot the boat through these Probably things, it's difficult. It's like driving through peanut butter or something. Yeah, something, I guess, yeah. Not that I've ever done that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Blocking sunlight from the- I like the maintenance guy. The reservoir also provided additional benefits. You know, one of the reasons we put so much chlorine in was to control the algae growth, but sometimes you still couldn't control it. There were times years ago in the summer where if we had an algae outbreak, you might actually, if you filled a bathtub up, it might have a slight tinge of green. I mean, it may be healthy to drink, but it might have a slight tinge of green. For I figured algae would have had something to do with it, but yeah, um, occasionally you'll have blooms and that's why there's procedures to put in the copper sulfate or something like that at the reservoir at the plant that I work. I'm not sure what they use here. The algae. See a bit of algae. Yeah, and, and it's just discoloring the water. That no longer occurs. So uh, with the sunlight gone, um, the, the algae problem is gone. We put in basically no chlorine. We've only had a few times since the shade balls went on LA Reservoir that we've added any chlorine at all. 
We never put shade balls in the reservoir that I worked at. You'd have to put um, nets, cages that are larger than the shade balls. So the shade balls won't get sucked into the uh, circulating water pumps. Those pumps are very powerful over pumping at over 250,000 gallons per minute apiece. And there's eight of them for two nuclear reactors. But you would just need to ensure that there's a cage basically in front of the uh, pump suction so they don't get sucked in. Because if you do, then you have what's known as an FME event, or a foreign material exclusion event. And that's when a foreign object gets intruded, and in the case of a shade ball, it could risk damaging the pump, especially the impeller. Very sensitive component. There was even an incident where an FME event caused a nuclear meltdown. But that's a topic for another video. And we used to do half the chlorine in the whole, the whole water system went into that reservoir just to control algae growth. But the big concern I had was evaporation. When I first heard about these black plastic balls reducing evaporation, it didn't seem to make any sense. I mean, wouldn't they absorb more energy and so heat up the water, leading to faster evaporation? It turns out the answer is no for a number of reasons. There's less direct sunlight exposure. In an open reservoir, there is more exposed surface area where water molecules can escape into the air. Plus, there is greater airflow over the water surface, continually removing the layer of moist air and replacing it with drier air, increasing evaporation. Now the shade balls do absorb more energy and get hotter on top, but the bottom of the balls stays cool. Having them filled with water helps with this too. Plus the balls contain mostly air, which is a good thermal insulator, and so not much of the heat is transferred through to the water. It's almost like a double pane window. You get that air gap in there, and the mm -hmm. air acts as an insulator, and so the sun never hits the water. Matter of fact, we've actually done some measurements, and it's actually cooler under the shade balls, even though they're black, than it is without the balls, just with the sun itself. So, huh. so the balls actually have a slight cooling yeah, effect. That. So for all of these reasons, shade balls reduce evaporation by 80 to 90%. That's pretty significant for a dry climate like Los Angeles. How much do they cost? These run about around three for a dollar. I think we paid 33, 34 cents a piece, something in that range. So 96 million, 32 million dollars. Though you should probably get a, get a wholesale deal going with that. So, and they, and they actually will have a salvage value, not that much, but if we go to remove them, they're, they're recyclable material. So, uh, but, but uh, we figured recyclable. that over the life of the balls, um, between the savings in chlorination, and the chemical savings, and the savings in evaporation. Chem ads can get expensive, so I was going to say 30 million is for something with a lifespan of 10 years like that, that serves the purpose of multiple chem injections. Yeah, you're saving money. Probably at least half the cost of the balls will be paid for. And so, I mean, of course, the water quality benefit is immeasurable, right. but even <laughs> the balls themselves will... Yes. You're also, there's also the fines you're not paying and the lawsuits you're not settling with for all of the water quality issues. So yes, you can easily attribute value to that. Save money doing what they do. Do you ever bring people out here for tours? Or? You're the first one. <laughs> Why am I the first one to get to go on a tour to, here? To get this uh, level of detail tour, yes. This is so cool. <laughs> I've, I've heard something about hexagonal balls. Have you heard <laughs> anything about hexagonal balls? Oh my gosh. That's so still we have shade ball? balls, and of course, Everyone in the world came up with a, another product. I have ones, I call it the ravioli, it's a small hex. We had large hexes, we had all sorts of pieces. And people say, well, they lock together. But the problem is, they need to not stack up. And they need yeah. to not sit in the bank of the reservoir. And the reservoir is going to go up and down. And so it was really the shape of the ball that, that makes them not not perch on the side because we need to make sure that these when the water goes up and down that they spread up or they you know, it's, you know spread out completely to cover the water as best possible. I mean I just can't get over what I'm seeing it's just so nuts. I'm waiting for you to say it looks like a pull of boba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow it's oddly beautiful I think. <laughs> I feel like that's the line that, that'll go in but you you got it like that is that's awesome. <laughs> Do you like boba? I love boba. <laughs> <laughs> I might get some after this. I can't say I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I really enjoyed this. Thanks so much for the recommendation. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.